With a Monaco win behind him and the Azerbaijan Grand Prix coming up this weekend, there's only one man that we can really talk about. It has to be Sergio Perez. And the fact that Sergio Perez is even being talked about in terms of this 2022 Drivers' Championship, the fact that he's even in and amongst Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc just shows how incredibly good the Mexican driver has been over the course of the start of this 2022 season. Obviously just picked up a contract extension at Red Bull, and this is a driver who was out of a seat in Formula 1 in 2020. He lost his seat from a team he'd been at since 2014 and now suddenly is in the mix for a title battle and I want to talk about how I think Sergio Perez has already become a Red Bull legend and to explain myself let me take you back to a Red Bull before Sergio Perez a Red Bull that was trying to replace Daniel Ricciardo in 2018 and they just couldn't quite find the balance Pierre Gasly had a go Alex Albon also came in but neither of the drivers could really live up to the expectation that Red Bull was setting themselves let's remember they were trying to displace a Mercedes team that had been absolutely dominant over the last era of Formula One and Red Bull hadn't won anything since Sebastian Vettel had left the team. So it was a very difficult time for Red Bull. They were clearly trying to find a new direction. They brought Max Verstappen in. They wanted him to be the poster boy for Red Bull, but they couldn't find somebody to go alongside him. They were bringing in these young, vibrant drivers that had come through the Red Bull Academy. And we know how incredibly good that Red Bull Academy is. If you just look at the amount of drivers on the grid right now that have links to Red Bull, it is obscene but they couldn't quite level up as quickly as Red Bull were hoping. Pierre Gasly never quite got that. Alex Albon, there was never that consistency in podiums that they were looking for from him. And alongside Max Verstappen, they never looked like they were comfortable in that car. And I think mainly because they knew they were never, ever going to be that number one driver. It's got to be really difficult for a young driver coming into a team alongside another really young driver who Red Bull have basically said, is going to be their number one for the foreseeable future. I think for me, if you're a young driver and you're coming into a top, top team, you kind of want the driver beside you to be a little bit past it. You know, we're looking at George Russell coming into this Mercedes team. He knows that Lewis Hamilton is coming towards the end of his career. So even if he has to, you know, wait a couple of years for Lewis Hamilton to leave, the team is going to be his in a couple of years time. Same with Charles Leclerc when he came into Ferrari. I think Charles Leclerc came into Ferrari at the perfect time. Sebastian Vettel was just losing a little bit of that tenacity and then obviously had that really down year. Ferrari decided to get rid of Sebastian Vettel and Charles Leclerc was there. Being young, vibrant and incredibly talented came through at just the right time for Ferrari. Whereas there's not that option for you at Red Bull. There's not that option to come in as a young driver at Red Bull and assert your dominance. That second seat became a little bit of a curse. And even Sergio Perez coming into that seat, lots of people were saying it's still cursed. Even though he's a more experienced driver, I still can't see this going very well. Lots of people talking about how Sergio Perez was only going to be in the seat for a year, maybe two years maximum. And to be fair, Sergio Perez came into that 2021 season, not under the best circumstances, because he himself was coming into this 2021 season as a dropped driver. It was looking like Sergio Perez was going to be out of Formula One altogether. He'd been dropped by a team that he'd been at since 2014. He'd been there the whole time. It was Force India, then into Racing Point. They were becoming Aston Martin, and the team decided to drop Sergio Perez, this driver that they'd built around for so many years years and actually it was the penultimate race that he had the penultimate race we thought was going to be the end of Sergio Perez's Formula One career that he really shone through and just showed all of that experience we have to talk about that race in Sakir that first win for Sergio Perez because he crashes remember at the beginning of the race he's starting in P5 from qualifying exceptional qualifying performance from Sergio Perez and we talk about how Sergio Perez has never really been a great qualifier and I think we'll delve into that in a little bit because 2022 is definitely he stepped it up but he's starting from p5 crashes actually causes max verstappen to drop out of the grand prix so maybe that was why red bull had a little bit of an eye on him but he's at the back of the pack and he just starts to sigh through the field it's almost lewis hamilton in brazil-esque he's just absolutely finding time and time and time he is taking chunks seconds out of drivers in front of him lap upon lap upon lap and when it gets to the pit stops he breezes past the rest of the grid luckily obviously george russell gets that puncture which does then lead to Sergio Perez winning the Grand Prix. But sometimes you have to make your luck. And he was by far and away the best driver on the grid that day for me. I know that George Russell was in a Mercedes for the first ever time. That would have been such an incredible storyline. But I think it trumps even that with Sergio Perez winning his first Grand Prix after 190 race starts in Formula One. Picking up that Grand Prix in what looked like was going to be his penultimate race in Formula One. Red Bull were looking for something different and he just massively put himself in the shop window. 
But as I mentioned before, there were still huge question marks surrounding Sergio Perez coming into this 2021 season. I personally know a lot of Red Bull fans who thought Pierre Gasly was going to get a second bite of that Red Bull cherry. He's gone back to AlphaTauri. He'd had a couple of really, really consistent and good years in that AlphaTauri car. And they thought maybe this is the time for him to step up and be that partner for Max Verstappen again. But you know what? Red Bull went a different direction. They brought in Sergio Perez and it was questioned in the first half of the season. It was because Sergio Perez's performances were questionable. He didn't look great in that car. He looked uncomfortable at times. Yes, I know he won that Grand Prix in Baku where we head this weekend, but that second driver curse was still looming over him. The fact that he was talked about as, you know, a stopgap for Pierre Gasly in 2022, or maybe Yuki Tsunoda, who'd been fast-tracked all the way through the formulas by the Red Bull setup. You know, there's lots of really young Red Bull drivers that are looking to go into that seat. So there was a lot of pressure on Sergio Perez to perform, especially as Max Verstappen started to put himself in the title battle as well. Sergio Perez was under lots and lots of pressure, but you have to give it to him. He started turning up towards the end of the season. I criticised Valtteri Bottas about this last year because I honestly think towards the end of the season when Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen both needed their teammates to be beside them and put pressure on the other driver, Valtteri Bottas floundered in my opinion. He really didn't help Lewis Hamilton that much in the title fight. Whereas Sergio Perez really stepped up just at the right time, especially when we get to the final race of the season. Obviously Abu Dhabi I could talk about forever, but Sergio Perez in that race, the wall of Sergio Perez was phenomenal. The courageousness that he showed, the intensity, the tenacity to just be that team player, to be that second fiddle to Max Verstappen, to bring home the silverware that Red Bull had been searching for for such a long time since Sebastian Vettel had left the team. And that alone put Sergio Perez in and amongst the talking about being a Red Bull legend, obviously picking up that first world title for Red Bull in a very, very long time. But all eyes were on him coming into 2022 and whether or not he'd actually continue that form on and whether he'd be good enough to keep hold of that Red Bull seat. And I don't think it can be understated that Sergio Perez over the course of this 2022 season has been absolutely sublime. The fact that he's now sitting in third place in this Drivers' Championship, a win under his belt in Monaco, and as I talked about at the top of the show, the fact he's being talked about in terms of this title battle is absolutely phenomenal for the Mexican driver. I don't think anybody would have had him really in the mix. In fact, I know lots of people who had him sixth of those kind of top six we were expecting to see with Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull coming into this 2022. 22 season but he has absolutely killed it his qualifying pace has been so much better that's the thing he was criticized a lot for over the course of last season been much much closer to Max Verstappen over the course of this year in fact in terms of teammates I think he's got the third best record on the grid in comparison to his teammate consistency in his results has been absolutely key as well the fact that he's been dragging Red Bull up in the drivers and constructors championships He's just been so good, finishing the top four in every single race that he's finished over the course of the season so far, whilst having quite bad luck, to be honest with you. Obviously, Bahrain's the main one for Red Bull, both of the drivers DNFing in that one. But if you look at Saudi Arabia, could have gone on to win that Grand Prix, and it was just the pit stop coming at just the wrong time. Safety car cost him the win in that one. We look at Australia, similar sort of thing with the Sebastian Vettel crash, costing him Imola, qualifying didn't go his way. Then he had to really try and drag it back in the sprint race and in the race itself showed incredible race pace. If he would have qualified a little bit higher and didn't get that unlucky sort of break in qualifying, we never know what he could have done over the course of that weekend. Miami, similar, lost out on power and with that huge back straight was down 20 horsepower. He's been so incredibly good, in my opinion, and his willingness as well to work as, as part of a team. I think Spain is the one that people come back to. The fact that, you know, there was that team message. Would Sergio Perez have been able to defend from Max Verstappen? I personally don't think so. But the fact he's willing to work as a team, the fact he knows that it's a Constructors' Championship, he knows that Red Bull haven't won a Constructors' Championship in a very, very long time. And he could be the driver to take them back to those heights alongside Max Verstappen. They've won the Drivers' Championship last year. Can they do the double? this year is the next question and Christian Horner even said you know he is in this championship as much as Max is Red Bull know that they've got two drivers this season that can go all the way and because Sergio Perez has been so incredibly good he's you know starting to cause a little bit of a stir he's done incredible work in 2022 he's been rewarded with that contract I think he massively deserves the extra two years in a Red Bull car and He's been just one of my favorite drivers to watch because he's come into Red Bull this season and looks like he's fixed every single problem that they've got. He's come in, he's the perfect second driver. They couldn't find that second driver for so many years in Formula One. He's come in 
absolutely fixed that for them. He's won them a driver's championship. That Abu Dhabi drive for me won Max Verstappen that world championship. Yes, I know it's a season long, but that defensive performance from Sergio Perez cannot go understated. It's one of the best defensive performances you will ever see in Formula One. He looks set to take Red Bull to their first constructors title since 2013 with Max Verstappen at the helm, possibly doing the double, winning a driver's championship and a constructors championship of the team. And not only that, he's in the talk for that world drivers championship. If that doesn't make Sergio Perez a legend, I don't know what will. But with all that combined, for me, Checo is a legend.